So yeah, so it's time to resume our um, our workshop. Our second speaker for the um, for this morning section is uh, Song Soo Lee from Seoul National University, and he's gonna talk about DMFT plus NRG and uh, from models to real materials, from local to non-local correlations. So Song Soo, I think you can start now. Okay, um, thank you for the introduction. First of all, I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me to this nice conference. Actually, my research has no much relation with the holography, but I think I was invited because I share the common interest with the people who are using the holography for studying condensed matter systems. Namely, I want to understand and predict the emergent quantum phenomena such as bad metal, strange metal, and quantum criticality. In my talk today, I'll tell you about a powerful numerical approach that can deal with all these emergent quantum phenomena for the systems ranging from simplified models to the real materials and also can deal with general type of strong correlations. So this talk consists of three parts. The for, for the first part, I'll explain my method, dynamic field theory, DMFT, and the numerical linear relation group, NRG, and its successful application to the studies on Hunt metals. And for the second part, I'll tell you about a cluster extension of this DMFT plus NRG method for studying heavy fermion systems where shown range non local correlations play a key role. And as the last part, I'll talk about our recent breakthrough in the theory of multipoint correlation functions that are the key tools for studying long range strong correlations. So let me start with the uh, basic introduction. So all these emergent quantum phenomena I mentioned can arise from strongly correlated lattice systems. Its minimal example is the Hubbard model, which is the type bind model. And on top of this, we have strong Coulomb interaction. We are typically interested in the regime where the single occupied states at each lattice site have the lower energies than the double occupied state and the empty state. This model is just a very simple model, but interestingly, there is no general, so general solution available yet. This model was originally designed to describe the D or F orbitals in correlated electronic materials. And when it becomes multi of the system, there are extra terms added to this Hamiltonian, such as Hunt coupling. And this model is of interest not only in the condensed matter physics. Actually, this model could, can be simulated by using cold atoms in optical lattices. And as I told you, there is no general solution for this system, but actually we know some special solutions. When interaction U is very much larger than hopping amplitude T, then the electrons are localized due to strong Coulomb repulsion, so the system becomes the mode insulator. In the other limit, electrons can delocalize, forming a band, leading to a metallic nature of the system. And to compare with experiments, uh, we, uh, as theorists, we want to compute the dynamical properties, the properties that depend on frequencies and energies, um, and they correspond to the uh, measurement in the spectroscopy or transport experiment. And we want to obtain them as a function of real frequencies. I'll talk about this issue, real versus image frequencies, two slides later. So just by now, let's say we want to treat the competition uh, between the atomic-like versus band-like nature of electrons and also want to compute dynamical properties. So there are several uh, numerical methods for doing that jobs, but here I'll focus on the dynamical main field theory, DMFT, and its extensions. So let me briefly explain what the DMFT is. DMFT maps an interacting lattice onto an impurity model where we take a lattice site and put it as the impurity, which is interacting, while mapping the rest of the lattice onto a non-interacting bath. The strong correlation effect um, appearing through over the lattice is now encoded in the energy dependence of the hybrid digest function, which describes the coupling between the impurity and the bath. By using this kind of mapping, we can treat the competition between atomic-like 
versus band-like uh, behaviors of reactions. And this mapping is based on as the single approximation that safeness is local, in other words, moment independent. According to this approximation, the safe energy on this lattice can be decomposed like this. So this first term, the red term, explains the word dynamical from the name of DMFT. We can capture the omega dependence, which is actually the key for studying strong correlations. In the field of uh, strong electronic correlations, uh, the definition of these strong correlations is that the safe energy has the omega dependence. Uh, by contrast, uh, the other approximations, such as the Hutchifo approximation, cannot treat the omega dependence of the safrenergy. And this second part of this right hand side means this mean field from the name of the MFT. We can treat only local correlations. And this approximation is known to be exact in the limit of infinite dimensions, and it remains to be a good approximation for high coordination number Z because the non-local safety decays quickly with Roger Z. And being mapped onto an impurity model, uh, now it becomes a matter of the condo effect. So the impurity or a single lattice side can have charge, spin, or orbital fluctuations, the quantum fluctuations. And these fluctuations are screened by surrounding electrons in the lattice or the electrons from the bath. So they form a screening cloud and outside of the cloud, the rest of the system cannot see these local fluctuations. So the basically via DMFT, we can treat the problems in the uh, lattice systems in terms of the condo effect. And it is a type of the mean field theory, so we should obtain the self-consistent solution. We can achieve this by solving this impurity model iteratively. So we call a many-body method that can solve this impurity model with the input of hybridization function and with the output of self-energy, we call such method as impurity solver. So the accuracy and availability of the empty calculations directly depends on the choice of the impurity solver. So in general, we need an accurate, generally applicable impurity solver. So there are many uh, impurity solvers available in the market. And among them, the most popular choice is a continuous time quantum Monte Carlo method. Indeed, there are many open source software that implement this method. So it, it became quite popular because um, uh, the, it has several strengths like it can treat the large systems such as multi orbital and cluster impurities. However, there are clear limitations. First of all, it is the Monte Carlo method, so there can be a sign problem. So when sign problem happens, the Monte Carlo sampling does not converge. So the, in such cases, actually it happens for general parameters because typically one can uh, just suppress the sign problem only for the specific cases. So the, um, the Monte Carlo calculations become unreliable. And it simulates the correlation functions on this immediate time axis. So the computation cost for simulating them increases quickly uh, as one goes to the lower temperature because this uh, simulation time interval increases with the inverse of temperature. And it, it works on the immediate time axis. So basically it provides the dynamical properties as a function of image frequencies. But to compare with the real frequency data, uh, we should obtain the real frequency data because in the real experiments, uh, one measures the experimental data as a function of the real frequencies. So one should perform the energy continuation on this numerical data residing on the image frequency axis. If it were the energy calculation, then it would be simple just change of variable. However, the, for the numerical data, it is very hard. Indeed, it is uh, one of the famous uh, <clears throat> inverse problems. The mapping the real frequency data to the image frequency data is very easy, but the other way around is hard. An analog is the deconvolution problem. Let's consider we have a sharp a photograph and it is easy to blow out this image. However, if we start from the blurred out image, it is hard to reconstruct uh, the original shop image because we should reconstruct the lost information. 
uh, in here, the situation is quite similar. In major frequency data has much less structure, so it is hard to reconstruct the lost information. So in this regard, we need a cell code real frequency impedance solver that can provide dynamical properties directly on the real frequency axis. So also there are some methods that can do this job, uh, but I choose to use the numerical linear machine glue uh, for the several reasons. The energy calculations start with discretizing the bath in energy space on a logarithmic grid. The discretized system is mapped onto a semi-infinite type binding chain, which is called Wilson chain. And its energetic states can be constructed via iterative downloadization. By collecting the data uh, from each iteration, we can construct the complete basis of this many-body energetic states of the Wilson chain. And each of the eigenstates can be represented as a matrix product state, which is a one-dimensional tensor network state. By using this tensor network formulation, we can efficiently uh, compute many different properties of the original quantum beauty models. For example, if we want to if, uh, obtain correlation functions, we can numerically evaluate spectral representations. For the standard two-point functions, it, their spectral representations are well known in the name of Lehman representation. And the energy calculations from them are known as the full density matrix calculations. Uh, in terms of the tensor networks, uh, the two-point correlation functions can be obtained by considering this kind of the tensor network diagrams. Recently, I and my colleagues have developed uh, the generalization of this method that can compute multi-point correlation functions by considering the new type of uh, spectral representations. These uh, multi-point functions can be evaluated uh, by considering this kind of the tensor network diagrams. I'll talk about this multi-point function issues on the later slides. So the NRG has several um, strengths. First of all, it is a real frequency solver, so we do not need uh, any NRT continuation because we can directly evaluate spectral representations on the real frequency axis. And it is a RG type method, so we construct the um, energetic states that have uh, this kind of logarithmic energy scale hierarchy. So we can cover the wide range of the frequencies and temperatures. No other method can do that. And also it is based on diagonalizing the Hamiltonian so we can treat general parameters. There is no issue of sign problem. So I have implemented this powerful method as a code package and it has been used by myself and my colleagues over the years. And that this <clears throat> application has led to the many successful publications. I'll talk about uh, some of them the rest of my talk. So far, I have explained my method, DMFT and NRG. And for the uh, next uh, example, uh, next part of my talk, I'll talk about this uh, successful application on Hunt methods. We first studied the simplified models and then the first principles description of the strength luthanate. So the Hunt methods are multi-orbit systems whose strong correlations are driven not only by Hubbard U, but also by Hunze. By Hunze, I mean Hunzberg's rule, which is also called Bassilin rule. When you fill the multiple orbitals uh, with electrons according to this Hunzberg's rule, we should first fill the different orbitals with the electrons of the same spin. After filling out all the orbitals, then we can add another electron of the opposite spin. Hunt metals appear in the normal states of ion-based superconductors and many of transition metal oxides and also many other uh, correlated electronic systems. These are bad metals with large effective mass and also small coherence scale. And they exhibit op orbital differentiation in that uh, nearly degenerate orbitals can lead to the largely different bands. Uh, an extreme example is the orbital starting morph phase. Here, some, <clears throat> some bands are insulating, the body is sliding, while the others are metallic, even though the uh, orbital parameters, such as the orbital level positions, are almost the same. 
the uh, minimal model to understand those Hunt metals is the three band Hubbard model that describes so called T2G orbitals of the average filling two. It's uh, the simplest or most symmetric interaction term can be written like that. So, this first part is the um, Hubbard interaction, which <coughs> penalizes charge fluctuation. And the second part is Hunt coupling, which favors larger spin. We typically choose the value of Z. Uh, to be just slightly smaller than the Hubbard interaction strength U. In such a three-band system, an electron has two angular momenta. One is spin, one half as usual, and the other one is orbital angular momentum one. We can associate these three orbital levels onto the three Z components of the angular momentum one. And when it becomes the two electrons, according to this um, average filling, and then the huge coupling aligns the spins and the red them are put in uh, the, on the different orbitals. So the, the, it becomes a spin triplet. And also it is orbital triplet because, because there are three ways to have a hole out of these three orbitals. So let's remind ourselves on the, uh, of this uh, DMFT business. If we consider the effective quantum impurity model in the DMFT, then the impurity would have this average filling of two. So impurity will be in this two electron state while the bath is non attracting and each electron would have this spin one half and orbital one. So from the point of view, this uh, bath, it would be e uh, harder to screen spin because impurity spin is larger while the orbital screening will be easier because they have the same values. In the next slide, I will um, tell you about more details about this uh, screening. So to understand the screening of the spin and orbital degrees of freedom in the Hunt metal systems, we considered the toy impurity models that are solved by using NRG and the numerical results were analyzed by using conformal field theory arguments. At the highest energies, <clears throat> A scale, the impurity is in the local moment regime, so the impurity is almost decoupled from the bath. And below an energy scale for the orbital screening, which is called TK orbital, now the orbital fluctuation at the impurity is screened by having extra electron from the bath. So here we put, have uh, this one electron that uh, corresponds to the, this remaining orbital. So the total state would be in the orbital singlet. But as we see here, there are two ways to do this. So we can choose spin up or spin down. So as a result, these two states have different spins. So these two states are competing each other in terms of the energy. So the system uh, shows this kind of the competing behavior or over screening in the more uh, technical terms. So the system is in the non-fermi liquid regime. Let me note that this is the many body physics. So this screening cloud is not a single electron. Actually, it consists of many electrons and holes. But here, this, this screening cloud has the same quantum numbers as the uh, single electron. So this is just simplified cartoon picture. And at for the lower energy scale, then uh, this, uh, this, this, this state with the larger spin wins over the other. So we call this regime as the spin splitting. At further lower energy scale below the spin screening and scale, TK spin, then the finally this enlarged spin, uh, three halves, uh, is also screened by having three holes from the path. So this, uh, there is a secondary um, condo screening happening. So as a result, this total state becomes a spin singlet and orbital singlet. So the electrons outside of this screening clouds cannot see the fluctuations at the impurity. So they behave as the effectively free particles. So the system is in the fermi liquid regime. So we see that uh, spins and orbitals in the Hunt metals uh, have different coherence energy scales. So that are uh, quite much separated. We call such a phenomenon as the spin orbital separation. And we see that this Fermi liquid regime 
can be reached after having the uh, two stage screening and also different um, exotic uh, regimes. So this TK spin should be small. And it is inverse proportional to the effective quartz particle mass. So this spin of the separation explains why the coherence scale of hunt metals is small and their quartz particle mass is large. Actually, the spin of the separation can be also seen from the DMT plus energy calculations of lattice models. On the left panel, I plot the uh, susceptibilities on the log log scale. So the susceptibilities are defined as the major part of spin spin correlation function, both at impurity and also the orbital orbital correlation function. So each curve shows a well defined peak at the corresponding screening energy scale. And we can interpret these curves like this. So we, we start from the highest uh, frequencies and go to the lower frequencies. And we see that curves are increasing, meaning that both spin and orbital fluctuations are uh, getting increased. And after those peaks, the both curves going down, especially at lowest frequencies, they have linear in omega dependencies. So it is the characteristic of the Fermi liquid, and we can understand them as the, those fluctuations are getting screened. But here, it is quite interesting reason. As I said here, it, it involves the known Fermi liquid, and here the spin fluctuations are increasing while the orbital fluctuations are decreasing. So here, uh, many interesting uh, behaviors of Hunt metals arise. The spin orbital separation can be also seen from the local spectral function, in other words, local density of states. So here we zoom in onto the uh, frequency window for the quasi particle band. So the Hubbard bands are outside of this frequency window. So the quasi particle peak has a two stage structure again. So there is a, a pronounced shoulder, and we have the central sharp part of the peak. So the position of this shoulder is marked by TK orbital, orbital screen energy scale, and the width of the central sharp part is given by TK spin. Uh, excuse me. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. Could you go back? Yes. Uh, here, I just want to have uh, some uh, physical, some feeling about the uh, various yes. language, languages. Yes. So first of all, uh, when you talk about the toy impurity models. Yes. Uh, is this uh, one condom model or multi-condom model? Yeah, that, that's a very good question. Actually, I didn't say much about the details of this model. Actually, here we considered um, a generalization of the condom model. So it has a, it's a single impurity, but this impurity can have both the spin and orbital duration freedom. It can have the spin and orbital. And we consider the three types of the um, exchange coupling. One is spin-spin coupling with the bath, and the other one is orbital-orbital coupling. So it is generalization of just the um, S dot S, I mean, it would be L dot L. And the third one is the spin-orbital uh, coupling. So we consider all these three couplings and then I studied the behaviors with the first NRG, and energy provides actually the energy spectrum, as I mentioned earlier. So like this, and this spectra can be actually um, analyzed by using CFT by just tracking down their rebel positions and the quantum numbers. So by using the arguments of the fusions, uh, we can uh, understand the uh, different energy scales associated with different uh, physical um, regimes. So by doing so, uh, we could identify all these features. I mean, so again, the same question repeated. Mm -hmm. Is this a multi-condom model or just one condom model? If this regime is, uh, how as do I said, you classify? As I said, it, I have just a single impurity, but this impurity has uh, both spin and orbital due to freedom. So? So the standard condom model has typically only spin, but we also consider the orbital uh, due to freedom of the impurity like this. So that means uh, that you we cannot, uh, I mean, classify whether this is uh, just a 
one condo or multi condo. Yeah, uh, we we call them as spin orbital condo model because it it has just a single infinity, but it has both spin and orbital degrees of freedom. So, still, nevertheless, uh, you are claiming that the conformal field theory analysis is relevant here. Yes. So, what happened to the lattice? Ah, here, just we consider the impurity model. So we consider just the the um this three channel path. So the path also can have the spin and orbitals as well. And then we can simply uh, apply this safety arguments of uh, fusion. So safety is relevant only for what the, I mean, some uh, quantum critical at the only at the criticality or? So, yeah, yeah, right, right. So this is the quantum model, so it is critical. So um, we actually generalize the argument by the f -leg and root -bish. So they have- Which is, I guess that this is just, just one quantum model, right? Uh, they, they, have, uh, made, uh, they have constructed a theory for multi-channel condo effect, but-, but again, nevertheless, it's just one condo, not a condo lattice or- uh, Yeah, yeah right, right, yeah. This is just impurity model. Yeah, so we have just one impurity here. Right, so somehow you are reducing the, so the, the final conformal, what kind of conformal field theory appears at the, at the end? Um, so, I mean, it, I, I, I would say uh, if you're interested in the, all these details, um, just you can look for this uh, paper. So because um, here we made the very detailed arguments on this analyzing this, oh. um, the conform field theory. So we just use the standard, I mean, generalized f -like and Ludwig's uh, boundary safety arguments. And we considered all different ways of the um, fusing the impurity and best degrees of freedom. Mm, so when you say uh, 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 spin splitting, it means that just the spin is uh, separ separated. So splitting means separation. Ah, uh, <laughs> yeah, um, good point. So the actually there are only three fixed points. Actually, this local moment and non-fermi liquid, where the two actually two energy levels are on top of each other, and the fermi liquid. Actually, this spin spreading is not a fixed point. Actually, it is a crossover with him. But we uh, denoted this because actually it is uh, actually dominating the physics of this spin orbital separation window in lattice systems. Actually. So um, this is also quite interesting uh, because also it gives some power of behaviors of the, uh, for example, this spin stability. It is not a fixed point, but it gives a power of behaviors. So it was quite interesting. Mm. Right. So do you have any phase diagram? Uh, one is, the, do you, you, you mean energy scale means what temperature or? Um, so here, I mean, it can be both uh, frequency or temperature because it is there. The all these things are crossover physics. So um, if we consider the system at temperature here, for example, then the oh, the thermal fluctuations would uh, just hinder the system to go to the Fermi liquid rhythm because this uh, or uh, this kind of the physics will be smeared out by finite temperature. Um, or if we consider very low temperature below this from liquid scale, then if we look at these finer frequencies, then we can see different uh, physical regimes by considering these all different uh, driving frequencies. Okay, thank you for the answer. Mm -hmm. And let's go. Yeah. yeah, thank you for the um, nice questions. So let me move on. Um, so after studying these uh, model systems, we uh, moved on to the first principles calculation of strength to 214. It is a bark system. And we have chosen this material because there are many nice experiments such as this uh, high resolution R piece. This material is, is known to show a textbook Fermi liquid behavior below 25 Kelvin in its normal state. Here, I will just talk about the normal state. And the, for example, one can see that below 25 Kelvin, this DC resistivity has a T-scale dependence. So it is the characteristic of the Fermi liquid. 
But now the question is why this Fermi-Riki scale is so small? Because this 25 Kelvin is smaller than the Baird's scales, which are on the scale of the electron volts by three or four orders of magnitude. So um, naturally, another question follows. So how the Fermi-Riki below this small energy scale emerges? What happens in between the emergent uh, energy scales? So to study the real materials with strong correlations, the first step to take is the density function theory calculations. So first we just uh, run DFT and find that there are three uh, bands crossing the Fermi level. The upper, uh, upper lines, upper bands will be almost empty and the lower lines will be, lower bands will be almost full. So they are less relevant in the physics uh, happening near the Fermi level. So we just take these three bands and perform the vinylization to parameterize the three band Hamiltonian to be solved by DMFT. So we can now apply uh, quantum antibody methods uh, to solve this three band Hamiltonian. However, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the continuous time quantum Monte Carlo solver cannot reach temperatures below such small um, characteristic scale. The computation cost was too huge. So this is the right problem to apply our powerful energy method. So let me show our results. So first, uh, this curves the output from DFT calculations, and this will be the input to our DFT plus energy calculations. So first, this xy orbital shows the uh, pronounced von Hugo singularity near the Fermi level. And the other two orbitals, which are degenerate xz and yz, uh, are in this blue curve. And then they have actually the narrower bandwidth than that of the xy orbital. And let's turn on strong correlations. So these are our DFT plus energy calculations. We foresee that the, the p there is a very sharp quasi particle peak of the XY orbital, which can be seen as the renormalization of the von Hoover singularity of the original input um, to the DF DMFT calculation. On the other hand, the peak height for the other two uh, orbitals, XZ and YZ, are suppressed compared to the uh, DFT input. When you track down just the peak heights as a function of the temperatures, we see that the peak height for the XY orbital depends very sensitively on temperature being maximal below 25 Kelvin. On the other hand, the peak height for these uh, XZ and Y's orbitals are more or less stable as a function of temperature. So it means that the XY orbital is more correlated than the other two. It is somehow surprising because in the beginning, XY orbital had a wider bandwidth, meaning that it has larger kinetic energy, while we chose to use the same interaction parameters for all the three orbitals. So it means that the ratio of the interaction to kinetic energy was smaller for XY orbital. So this, this six simple argument doesn't hold in this system. And actually, the stronger correlation of the XY orbital was induced by this von Hoover singularity near the Fermi level. If it were quite separated, it would not be it would not be that much important. But being close to the Fermi level, this von Hoover singularity made all this magic. And what we also studied the spin of the separation. This is the uh, similar type of the plot I showed as I showed earlier. So these uh, uh, susceptibilities, the immature part of spin spin correlation or orbital orbital correlation on the log log axis. We see that the um, spin screening energy scale is much smaller than the orbital screening energy scale. And we found that this orbital differentiation further pushed the spin orbital separation. If there were no orbital differentiation, the separation will be less than what we see by now. And both, sorry? Uh, so here in this, uh, uh uh, what uh, the, sorry, uh, uh, would you let me just the, um, speak up? I, I cannot oh, hear. I'm sorry. I had the wrong mic. Ah, uh, thanks. All right. So in this sample material, what is the local, I mean, the, I mean the density of uh, impurity, magnetic impurity? 
So here the feeling is four actually. So the, the beginning for simplicity, I just say the average feeling is two, but actually the, this feeling two and feeling four can be mapped via a particle. Um, uh, the, the you, don't, you, you, you don't mean that every site has now an added impurity? What you yes, do. so yeah, it should be self-consistent by now. So the, the bath should reflect the average feeling of four here. So it is a self-consistent model now. I'm, so the bath sorry, is not... I'm sorry. sorry. So I'm just figuring out the picture that is, uh, do you have a localized magnetic impurity or not? Ah, um, it is, it has... Or you uh, don't, you, you just consider the moving electrons uh, yes uh, yes yes in, electrons can ah, move so it's they not metallic. really the localized magnetic impurity yes probably. yes so ah. the, in the previous slide it was just localized impurity because we wanted to uh, analyze them with the cft but here we are on the very realistic setting so the charges can move i see. thank you for clarification mm -hmm. yeah so yes um uh, so yeah, so the both curves, uh, they become linear in omega, which is the characteristic of the Fermi scale. So um, we just found that the combination, the interplay <clears throat> of a spin orbital separation and orbital differentiation led to this smallness of Fermi scale. And we also uh, studied the um, orbital dependent uh, spin responses. And we found that this XY orbital had a stronger response than the other two orbitals by roughly factor three, which is also consistent with the um, NMO experiment. So let me conclude this first part, part, first part of my talk. Let me emphasize that uh, this is the first ab initio calculation of this material uh, tuning temperatures from the uh, very large temperature through the, this 25 Kelvin, finally towards zero temperature. No other method can do this. So these uh, DMFT methods uh, were very successful because we could uh, treat the omega dependence of self energy. If we had no this omega dependent self energy as in the standard DFT calculations, we will have very boring, simple uh, band structure. If it were, for example, this one band Hubbard model, uh, this non attracting band structure would be just a single line. However, by including this omega dependent self energy, we can capture the very rich structure of the, uh, this band, um, band structure, such as quasi particle band, Hubbard band, and the sub big. Then the natural follow up question is what happens if we could resolve this momentum dependence of self energy? For this, we need the non-local extensions of DMFT that can treat this momentum dependence. And also another question is, okay, then what would be the systems uh, where the non-local correlations are relevant or important or crucial? As the first example for such a case, uh, I'll talk about the uh, heavy firmness systems where short range non-local correlations are crucial. So heavy Fermi systems are in the Fermi liquid region, but with a very large effective mass. Their effective mass can be thousands or hundreds of times larger than the bare electron mass. The examples are the uh, ytterbium delodium silicide or cerium cobalt indium and many others. The, as a theorist, we want you to start from the uh, simplified this basic model that can capture the key ingredients of these materials. So we started from the pure Dianda's model, which has uh, two orbitals at each lattice site. Uh, one orbital is F orbital, which is the uh, localized and interacting, and the other one uh, is non-interacting, forming a conduction band. These two orbitals are coupled to each other via this uh, hopping amplitude V, and we'll use this V as a driving parameter for the making a quantum phase transition. In this system, there are two mechanisms competing each other. One is RK2 interaction, which uh, favors um, anti ferment correlation of the F electrons uh, when the conduction band is near half filling. And the other one is the conduct screening. 
And this quantum screening sensitively depends on the value of V. So when V is large, the conduction electrons come to screen this F spin. So when it is screened, then uh, neighboring F electrons cannot see this F electron spin. So then our KY interaction cannot hold because there is no uh, target to make the anti-alignment. So the system will be in the condo phase when the temperature is low and the V is large. In the other limit, when V is small, then the condo screening is suppressed exponentially because the uh, condo temperature depends on this uh, hybridization in an exponential way. So the RKKY interaction wins. So we call this phase as RKKY phase. And between these two phases at zero temperature, there is a quantum phase transition at the quantum critical point. And this point becomes a finite region at finite temperatures forming this kind of the quantum critical fan. And the physics here is covered by the non fermi liquid. So this RKQY interaction, actually we didn't hard code it, this RKQY interaction in the Hamiltonian. We only had this U, V, and P in our Hamiltonian. But this is quite uh, something emergent one, uh, which is encoded in the non-local cell frenzy connecting the neighboring lattice sites. So to treat them, we need to use uh, cluster extension of the MFT. So the minimal setup uh, is- Excuse me? Yes. Sorry. This is, uh, I'm slightly confused about this uh, uh, phase diagram. Mm -hmm. So we may presumably this coupling, right? Sorry, what do you mean by the coupling? V, V, V. V, yes, yeah, V, V, yes. It's a presumably there's a coupling, right? Uh, it is hoping. Just the particles can hop from here to there. So here, uh, U is strong, so it prefers uh, half filling, but actually there can be also charge fluctuation. So particles can hop uh, in and out from uh, these F orbitals. Uh, so that is not coupling, you say? Yeah, it yeah. is not the condo coupling. It is uh, uh, the uh, hopping coupling. It's not the exchange coupling. So um, if we take the limit of the uh, infinite U, it will become the condo lattice, but we want it to be more general. We also want you to consider the role of this charge fluctuation at F orbitals. So we chose to study the periodic Anders model, not the condo lattice. Mm. So V is not necessarily change. Uh, so T and V is independent, okay. Thank you. Yeah, T is fixed as uh, typically as the energy unit. And also we fix typical U because it is much larger than the other parameters. But the system sensitively depends on the value of V. So yes, um, so let me keep going. Uh, so the, we use a two-size cellular DMFT where we split the system as a collection of um, these two-side unit cells and then the now impurity will cover this larger unit cell. And we can just use this uh, almost same idea of DMFT here. And also there were some previous studies using different impurity solvers, uh, namely exact analyzation and CTQ and C. However, they had limitations. Actually, that they were inaccurate and could not access low temperatures. And more interestingly, uh, their results were conflicting each other. The exact analyzation calculations could find the quantum critical point, but CTQMC, which was known to be more um, uh, accurate than the exact analyzation, could not find the quantum phase transition. To just the, um, resolve this controversy, uh, we use our powerful energy method as the input is over for this two size DMFT. Sorry, but uh, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm yes? sorry, but uh, could you, uh, do you have any Hamiltonian which describe, or you, can you distinguish the how V and T is different? So just T is just hoping, just uh, as in the type bind model. V is also just hoping, also as in the type bind model, but just the, this value is different from this. Uh, hoping connecting different lattice sites. And the U is just a, a, a conventional, just Hubbard type interaction. That's all. So V is the connecting impurity and the. No, no, uh, these, uh, these um, let me just. Electron. 
So the, this is, uh, these are individual lattice sites. And this, so uh, finally we studied the three dimensional, the cubic lattice, but just for visualization, I just took uh, just the one dimensional uh, cross section. And this each of this red circle indicates the uh, lattice site and the lattice site has two orbitals, but this F orbital, it doesn't couple, um, couple in terms of hopping to the another F orbital, the neighboring site. So there is no hopping. They can talk to each other within the same lattice site, but no with the uh, neighbors. I see, I see, I see. V is inducing hybridization, I guess. Yeah, it is a hybridization. Yes, yes. Um, oh, thank you. So, Sorry, but I'm, I have also a question. I mean, is this a controversy or it was known that the quantum, that there was a quantum critical point? In other words, it was known that one of the two was wrong or was really a controversy to, to be solved? Uh, yeah, um, I, I, I'll explain in the next slide. <laughs> I so, I mean, yeah, the, it, it was true, but actually let me talk about it in the next slide. Okay. So just the teacher. Um, so the to focus on the nature of this quantum criticality in heavy frame systems, we enforced the SU2 spin symmetry of the system. So there is no uh, symmetry breaking. So this RKKY phase has strong anti ferment correlation as in the um, quantum magnets, but actually there is no uh, nail ordering. So the, their symmetries are not broken. Uh, so actually it is not a mere uh, theoretical setup. Indeed, there are real materials whose quantum critical points are separated from the magnetic ordering. So, um, pointer, okay, good. This is our numerical wizard. So this is the phase diagram as a function of the energy and uh, uh, hybridization hopping amplitude V. So the y-axis is on the log scale. So it can be either um, frequency omega or temperature T because uh, these lines, uh, desk lines are crossover lines that distinguish different physical regimes, say uh, phases. So in the um, largest uh, temperature regime, the F electrons are effectively coupled from the rest of the system. So they are in the local moment regime. And when V is large and temperature small, then the condo screening wins. So uh, the system is in the condo phase where the band structure has this uh, two band feature. We can understand these two bands, these two bands in terms of the hybridization of dispersive conduction band and the flat F band. Due to the hybridization between this coupling, uh, we have this hybridization gap, but of course it is many body physics. So the position and the size of the hybridization gap is strongly renormalized to the value on the scale of this uh, family liquid scale, which is much smaller than the Bayerian scale. And in the other case, uh, the F electrons have a strong anti ferment correlation and interestingly, we found that there are three bands. As far as I know, nobody else could find this uh, third band, which is very narrow, crossing the fermi level. Its width is on the order of this uh, fermi liquid scale, which is uh, smaller than the 10 to minus four uh, of the, um, uh, the bare hopping amplitude. And this existence of the narrow band could not be captured by the other method. Only energy can do this because energy is like a microscope that can resolve very small uh, frequencies. And the, just it is now I can answer to the um, previous question. So why the other method could not work on that? So first, exact derivation uh, was uh, inaccurate just by construction because it always suffers with the um, the numerical artifact of making the small cluster system. And Monte Carlo is more robust, but they could not reach the, the low temperature. Actually, they, they could reach only just near this uh, 10 to minus three or something. So they could not see any further crossovers or quantum phase transition. All characteristic energies were very small. But actually it is not that surprising because in the real- Correctly, the Monte Carlo was seeing only the local, what you call local moment. Yes, in precisely, yes. Okay. Yes, they could see some features, but mm -hmm. they could not see any um, abrupt changes. I see. Thanks. Questions? So, 
Sorry? Yeah, I have a question. Yes. Um, so your calculations were done at zero temperature or finite temperature? So the both, both. Uh, we we covered all the temperatures. Yes. Um, so this um, existence narrowband actually could explain and uh, answer many open questions in the field of uh, heavy fermions. For example, it is it explains the strong correlation effect of the system because its bandwidth is very narrow, but also it could explain the uh, shape of the Fermi surface because actually its Fermi surface uh, resembles the that of the free electrons. It is quite interesting. And this slide and the next slide, I'll talk about just some of the key results. Actually, we have much more results, but I will focus on some of them. First, we have uh, computed the whole coefficients across this uh, phase transition. Uh, when you look at the just lowest temperature, which is very close to zero temperature, the whole coefficient, whole coefficient shows a jump it, and also it changes the sign. It means that the nature of charge carriers change their nature. I mean, from hole to particle or particle to hole. As we go to the higher temperature, this jump gets smeared out because we are now crossing this non-fermi liquid regime. Actually, this kind of jump was also found in the real material, ytterbium it, dilodium disilicide, YRS. Um, so the experimentalists have found this jump, which gets smeared out as going to the uh, higher temperatures. So this range of the uh, real temperature corresponds to the, our uh, temperature parameters um, in this range. And let me note that here in this material, the phase transition is driven by applying the B field, which we didn't. Here we used V as a driving parameter. But it is quite interesting that our simplified model could capture the key ingredients of this experimental data. And we also studied the nature of this quantum critical regime. We found that it is governed by this oversquading behavior. Again, we are using DMFT type method, so it is the now matter of the condo effect. And this oversquading is similar to what ha what's happening in the two channel condo physics. And based on that, we computed numerically and also had the analytics uh, explanation on this quantum scaling behavior of the optical conductivity and resistivity. So there is no uh, characteristic energy scale coming in, so they are quantum scaling. And actually these results are very consistent with recent experiment on the same material. So they um, found the scaling collapse of opt optical conductivity by playing around with the exponent and they found that the exponent uh, for this optimal scaling collapse is 1.03 and what you have found is one, it's very close. And also they have found the linear in key resistivity, which is the characteristic of the unknown fermi liquid or strange metal. And we could explain that this behavior comes from the over screening uh, a la two channel condo effect. So let me- Can you, can yes. you uh, explain a bit of uh, the local moment phase? Why NFL is blocked by that line here. And so basically, uh, we can understand this uh, here, the physics here as a two stage screening. So let's consider again, let me just uh, annotate. So say we stop, we consider this vertical line as uh, some kind of the RG flow. And then the, as I showed earlier in the context of wind metals at highest energy scales or temperatures or frequencies, we can regard uh, just the couple impurity, the local moment. Of course, at much higher uh, uh, the energy scale, uh, we will see the free orbital regime where the uh, charges are also flowing, but this is very large scale. It will be the order of the 10, which is on the scale of the U. Um, and we go to the local moment regime and the first some degrees of freedom are screened. So it is not that simple as in the Hunt metal, it's much more involved, but leading to this intermediate non fermi liquid regime. And after the second screening on the scale of this t fermi liquid, then we go to the fermi liquid regime. Um, uh, these... okay. Thank you, thank you. Okay, yeah. so that is that line is just the usual 
I guess the condo problem. Okay. Yes, yes. So the key point is uh, using DMFT time methods, we can understand the lattice physics in terms of the condo effect. Here, it is just two stage condo squid, but it can explain many uh, intriguing uh, phenomena in heavy fermion systems. So this NFL phase is what? Um, uh... Uh, very good point. So we found that it has the, uh, um, some, it shows some features as in the over screening in two channel condo systems, but actually we could not make uh, precise CFT arguments. Uh, there were several reasons, but the, um, it, it, it'll be interesting to see uh, some CFT explanation on the nature of this non firm liquid. We do not have an answer yet. Hmm. All right. So, yeah, uh, thanks. Thank you for the uh, nice questions. So let me conclude this second part of my talk. So I, I would emphasize that this is the first study that found the jump in whole coefficients and these the quantum critical scaling behaviors by directly solving the period and this model without resorting to um, any effective theory. We just solved the microscopic Hamiltonian and found all these interesting features. Um, yes, so this uh, cluster extension was successful because we could capture the, some of the non-local correlations. However, cluster extensions ha have also limitations because the, uh, the range of correlations can be covered is limited by the size of the cluster. We cannot capture self energy across the boundary of the um, cluster. And the computation cost increases, increases exponentially with the cluster size. So if we want to treat the long range uh, self energy, it is not possible with cluster extensions. To counter them, uh, there have been several proposals that are categorized into diagrammatic extensions of DMFT. With them, we can treat the strong correlations in the thermal dynamic limit. So these methods are developed from 2006 or something. So it has been less than two, uh, 20 years, just uh, some seven years or something, but they were quite successful. So there exists uh, already a review on these methods and the very detailed extensive benchmark uh, studies on these methods. So all these type of methods uh, share the key features. So they start from the local multipoint correlation functions at the self-consistent impurity model and uh, solve the field theoretical calculations, uh, field theoretical equations such as the Betis Arpat equation or Parker equations uh, with the, those local multipoint correlation functions as the input. And as the output, they provide non-local correlation functions in the original lattice system. So here, this uh, word diagrammatic means uh, Feynman diagram. So these are just uh, theoretical methods. So to perform this kind of uh, calculations, we need the local multipoint correlation function as the input. However, before our studies in um, published in 2021, there were some limitations. Uh, there are two sides. One is analytic and the other one is numeric. On the analytic side, uh, we know that the two-point functions have uh, spectral representations known as REM representation. By using that, we could uh, establish the relations among the spectral function and imaginary frequency much borrowed Green's function and real frequency retarded Green's function. However, such representation was not known for a multipoint case. There were some studies uh, which tried to develop, uh, derive the spectral representation for the major frequency correlators, but the, nothing else has been found because they could not be generalized. And on the other hand, on the numerical side, there were two types of the method that can compute the multipoint correlation functions in the impurity system. One is exact derivation, the other one is Monte Carlo. But as you see from this table, they had the problems. For example, exact derivation was inaccurate. Also, Monte Carlo suffered some status quo noise problem, and they could not reach low temperature. And last but not least, they could not provide real frequency data. And even worse, we didn't know how to analytically continue the image frequency data because this kind of relations 
were not known. Uh, in the last year, we published two papers, uh, especially in the second paper, we developed an NRG method that resolves all these issues. So I will explain a little bit more detail about these two papers as the last part of my talk. So the first paper focuses on the NRT theory and the second paper on the macro method. So let me note that these two papers are the first back-to-back -back publications in PRX uh, written by the same authors. So um, let me talk about the first uh, paper's result. So there we have derived uh, the generalized spectral representations of multipoint correlation functions. So these are so general, so we could treat any number of points and all the frequency formalisms used in the quantum field theory. So my hope is that uh, in the future, say 10, 20 years later, our results could be included in a quantum field theory textbook. So in this slide, I will show you a der um, derivation on the L point correlation function in the real frequency zero temperature formalism, which you call ZF. So the ZF correlator is defined as the thermal expectation value of the time ordered operators in the Heisenberg picture. And by explicitly considering all possible permutations of these operators, we can write, uh, rephrase the definition like this. So this time ordering is now given by the theta function products that sort time variables on the time axis like this. And according to this permutation, now we gain uh, the sine factor coming from the commutation or anti-commutation property of the operators. And the remaining part is simple expectation value of the operator products. And uh, when we compute the uh, frequency domain uh, correlation function via a Fourier transform, then convolution theorem dictates that the product in the time domain becomes the convolution in the frequency domain. And each term with the same color coding uh, connected to each other up to free transform. So this uh, red term is, uh, comes from just simple theta function product. And this one comes from this expectation value. And we call this red term as the convolution kernel, which depends only on the formalism because it just comes from the theta functions. And we have derived these convolution kernels for all three formalisms, namely this ZF and imaginary frequency much bar formalism, MF, and real frequency finite temperature calculus formalism, KF. And these do not know about the system, so it is independent from the system. On the other hand, the separated part, which we call partial spectral function, depends only on the system because it is defined by using uh, just the operators and the density metrics of the system. And it is independent from the choice of the formalism because all formalism specific information is now for, um, uh, 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 <clears throat> is just concentrated on this convolution kernel. And this convolution structure uh, indicates that we can compute the correlation functions in a two stages way. We first compute the partial spectral functions using some many-body method and then regard them as independent result and save them. And later on, if we want to compute certain correlation function on a certain frequency grid with a certain choice of formalism, then we can just call the data again and perform the convolution. Actually, this convolution is very simple. It takes much less computation cost compared with the cost for computing the partial spectral functions. And but, so it means that we can just recycle the same partial spectral functions for different correlators. And by doing so, we can also avoid the issue of NRT continuation because we can just simply call the kernel for the, for example, Keldis formalism to get the real frequency data. So we do not need to use NRT continuation. And then we, in the second paper, we have developed an NRG method that evaluates the uh, generalized spectral representation. Uh, you do not need to read the details of the, this equation. Just what I want you to say is the partial spectral function is defined in terms of the energy eigenstates and that's the metrics and the operators that define the correlation function, that's all. And as I explained earlier, NRG, can provide the complete basis of energy eigenstates for energies ranging 
over all magnitudes. So by using this uh, 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 <clears throat> perk, then we can compute the partial spectral functions and the correlation functions for the temperatures and frequencies of all magnitudes. So with NRG, we have computed the four point full vertex function. So I think this is the holography um, conference. So I don't need to explain the detail of this uh, vertex. Just the, my key point is that we can regard this vertex as the effective interaction. And using NRG, we can compute the uh, full propagator and full vertex uh, without the, any problem involved in uh, making this perturbative series converge. So by using these full uh, ingredients, the unperturbed ingredients as a starting point of the field theory calculations, we can perform general uh, quantum field theory calculations, which has uh, general applications. So as a result, um, let me just show the result of the Anderson Pitt model. So this, we, we have just uh, interacting uh, spinful a Fermioni orbital, which has this Hubbard type interaction U, which is the hybridized with the non interacting bath of half band with D. And you have chosen temperature, which is slightly larger than this conduct temperature. I'll talk about the reason just soon later. So here we have computed the full vertex. Here we have chosen just the zero bosonic frequency slides. Of course, we can compute the full three dimensional dependencies, but here for visualization, we have chosen this kind of slide. So um, as a function of the two fermionic frequencies, u and u prime, uh, we, I plot the data as an intensity plot. And left column is for the different spin components. So the different uh, electrons of different spins are coming in and coming out. And the right column is for the same spin component. So all the legs have the same spin. And first row is our energy reserve, and second row is the difference between our energy reserve and Monte Carlo reserve provided by our collaborators in Vienna. And we see that we don't see much of the difference here. It is almost white. To see the difference, we should uh, scale down the range of the data by two orders of magnitude. It means that our method agrees nicely with the uh, state of the art Monte Carlo calculations up to 1% deviation. But as we see now, there are some noises near the, um, this uh, boundary of the frequency window. Actually, we, uh, uh, my collaborators provide the data outside this frequency window, but the noises were much larger. These noises are coming from this Monte Carlo uh, st statistical noise. So they typically suffer with uh, these statistical noises, but the NRG data can provide a smooth and accurate high frequency behaviors. And also, this was the uh, almost lowest temperature they could reach, but the NRG can reach uh, much lower temperature. That's why I use this temperature for benchmarking. And on the next slide, I will show you that we can also compute the real frequency data, which are very interesting. Maybe we need to, um, to shrink a little bit because we are already 10 minutes over, but yeah. Yes, let's, yeah. yeah. Yeah, sorry for that. So just actually this is the last uh, research slide. So um, hopefully I can just end in three minutes. Okay. Good. Um, so for this, we have chosen the DMFT solution of the one band Hubbard model. So this is a schematic phase diagram. So when interesting U is large, the system will be in spreading and small and metallic. In the intermediate regime, we have coexistence regime. So it means that a system can be in both phases. So this is the local spectral function. Mm -hmm. Uh, the blue line is for the metallic solution. So we have the positive particle peak at the frame level, and the red line is for the um, bond is threading with, uh, phase with, where we have a gap. And we computed the uh, vertex of the different spin component. And let me emphasize that this temperature is inaccessible by Monte Carlo methods. And these are our results. So the uh, first row is for the metallic solution. A metallic phase, the corresponding to this blue line, and the second row corresponds to the red line, insulating phase. And the first column is the major frequency much part of Morrison data, and the second and third column correspond to rear and major parts of the, some specific calculus component of the rear frequency vertex. And we let's first contrast the uh, first row and the second row. We see that they are very different. 
even though they come from the same choice of the bare parameters. So it just reveals that there are interesting many body effects um, arising. And when you look at this uh, real frequency metallic solution data, we see there are some sign changes, red to blue, blue to red, and so on and so forth. And they coincide with the, these dips separating the quartz particle peak and the Hubbard bands. And such sign change doesn't show up in the much more frequency data because the features are all smeared out in the image frequency world. So it shows that the real frequency data are better to uh, show the physical uh, features in the system. Also, we uh, studied this insulating phase and we found that the overall disk cross structure resembles the vertex of the single lacticide, which we call the Hubbard atom. But on top of this, we see a very sharp uh, diagonal feature that comes from the uh, final hybridization due to the quantum fluctuation between the neighboring sites. So this is a summary of my talk. So uh, the uh, conclusion for the first part is that the MFT plus NRG is a powerful method for understanding strongly correlated electron systems. And the <clears throat> summary for the second part is that cross extension can capture strong range correlations that are key to understand the quantum criticality in heavy Fermi systems. And the summary for the last part is that uh, we can now compute the non perturbative multipoint correlation functions that can be used to the general quantum field theory calculations. So, as the last slide, I want to thank my collaborators uh, for recent years and also uh, the funding agencies who supported my postdoc research. Um, thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you very much for this very interesting talk that provided us all the news and all the uh, let's say interesting results on the recent year on this topic. So thanks a lot. Are there, I mean, we already had a few questions during the talk, but are there any further questions from the audience, either online or, or offline? Right. Let me uh, start. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, thank you for <clears throat> very interesting talk. Um, let's just, I want to summarize uh, uh, your result in my memory. Mm -hmm. uh, so, in the first part, um, mm -hmm. you yes. mentioned you mentioned about the uh, spin charge separation, spin orbital separation. Um, spin, sorry, spin orbital separation. Yes. So, um, could I uh, think about this one as a, something similar to uh, spin charge separation, which means some fractionization of the electron? Uh, that's so is very... it a similar a kind of a phenomenon? <clears throat> uh, actually, that's a very good, interesting question. Actually, I do not have a perfect answer for that. But let me say like this. Um, first of all, here also the charge fluctuations are separated on the um, different end scale. Actually, the charge fluctuations uh, are squint at the even higher uh, energy scale. So in this sense, one can say, okay, this charge spin orbital separation. And it has this kind of similarity, but also I'm not sure whether it can be directly related with the spin, of, uh, spin charge separation in 1D systems because uh, their origins are a bit different. Here, the separation happens because of the um, different condo screening uh, energy scales, but the there, that their origin is different, right? Because it is specific to one D system. So, so mm -hmm. right. So I was wondering whether uh, electron degree of freedom is, uh, I guess, uh, somehow splitted. Into... Yes, somehow splitted. Yes, yes. So if you look at, for example, these uh, lowest energy excitations, say quasi particle excitations, they will have much more spin nature than the orbital nature, right? Because this value of the susceptibility differs by two orders of magnitude. So it means that it would have much more spin nature, yes. But right, so, the, here right. it would be more orbital, yes. So, so in this sense, the spin is uh, maybe non-moving or slow, more slowly moving than the uh, uh, maybe orbital degree of freedom, uh, probably. Uh, so, okay. Yes, yes. 
Yes, we, we, we can say like that. Yeah, so the they would behave differently uh, with the uh, different energy scales. Yes. Right. And also, uh, is, what is this just a model study or some real realistic material? Uh, this is model and this is real material. Strength to the work system. So, so this what kind of this is heavy fermion system? Uh, this is the um uh it this material has become quite famous because of the controversy in the nature of its superconducting uh phase. There was some controversy that whether it is a, a spin triplet or spin triplet or something like that. There was some really hot debate. Uh, but here we focus just focused on the normal state because normal state was also interesting. Um, so the the, uh, the people in the, this hunt metal community are actually theorists. Just the um, want you to understand this the normal state of this material in terms of the hunt metal, and it is actually hunt metal. So you you are saying that the for uh, this phenomena happens to all hunt material, or yes, yes, it's, it's a very general one. Yes, right. so that's why we started from model systems because um, the the model wizard qualitatively agrees with the, this first principle calculations. Mm. <coughs> thank you for very interesting discussion. Yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot. Are there any other questions? It seems not. So maybe I can ask a very quick question. I mean, you, you explained us all the, all the beauty of this method and so on. Are there limitations? And for example, I mean, all the time I, I hear about a renormalization group, I always think that probably a problem typically is uh, when you have too much entanglement, right? I mean, often- uh, Yeah, yeah, right, right. So, so this do you have, our, yeah, yeah, keep going, keep going. I mean, do you have an example where you see possibilities to further improvements because the method is still not complete or let's say, what, what do you think about the future? Yeah, so that's a very good point. So actually the, the problem here is that uh, wh when you treat too many orbitals, so here, this is a three orbital system, but if we go beyond four orbitals, for example, um, the computation cost will be too huge because again, yeah, as you said, the issue of the entanglement. So um, it is uh, hard to treat the systems with, for example, four F orbitals or um, yeah, something like that. So, uh, so the, this is the limitation. But also okay. we are trying to develop the method to uh, that can deal with this issue. So um, in the end, maybe we can do that because say 10, 20 years ago, people thought that, okay, NRG cannot treat multi-orbital systems. They just, people just stuck to the one band system. But now we can perform the three band calculations as just uh, usual on the usual basis. So you think this improvement will be not based on, let's say more powerful, calculators will be something, uh, let's say for, I mean, some some conceptual improvement that you need to do, right? If I understand correctly. Yes, both, both. Um, so uh, the, there were methodological advances and also now we have much powerful, more powerful computer, right? Because the, the cell phone is much more powerful than the workstation uh, 20 years ago. Right. So um, the, there are both ways of improvements. Okay, thanks a lot. It was a wonderful talk. Uh, if there are no further questions, I, I think I can stop uh, the morning session. And uh, if I remember correctly,